What is up? I'm gonna show you on this video how I made a custom like Grammarly type quality checker for a content agency. Now, um, this is probably most relevant for anybody who does written content and you have teams of other writers that are writing the content for you. You have an SOP for what quality looks like. You are doing the quality checks and you want to speed up that process. For this particular client, they, when I first implemented this, maybe they had about 20 writers and the founder was doing all the quality checks himself. It was the biggest part of his day. I'd automated the vast majority of the rest of his business, but this quality check process was taking him several hours per day, especially because he was ramping up quite quickly. He had a lot of new writers that he had to sort of train. And so there was a lot of quality checking to do to make sure that the client got the right result. So why is this relevant? This is the, the, the make scenario, by the way, but like what's the business case for this, right? The business case is that Grammarly doesn't check for whether there was enough words included in the piece of writing. It doesn't check for uh, did the writer use the right like SOP or template or formatting. So it doesn't check for things like, did they include enough links if you're doing SEO content, things like that. There's, there's things that are part of your quality SOP that, that define done that gr the Grammarly doesn't do. So basically, I developed a, a custom quality checker solution for this client's uh, SOPs. I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. So this is a more in-depth tutorial. Uh, feel free to follow along if you have a massive agency or you're just generally curious about what is possible. Um, but I'll show you the entire solution and you can always like, think about a stripped down solution that's a simpler solution for your particular needs. So for this, you will need two things. You will need a make scenario. Make is a, a alternative to Zapier and you'll see in a second why something like this would be just like virtually impossible to build in Zapier. Uh, and then you also need Airtable. So this is what the this is what the the end scenario looks like. Uh, this is checking a lot of stuff. So uh, the reason why it's this this complicated is because we're checking for formatting, text size, line spacing. Uh, we're checking certain like if something is capitalized or something is italics or uh, in quotes we kind of ignore certain quality mistakes because we're assuming that it's a direct quote. Um, same with italics. Some stuff we're checking for like word, the total number of words. Um, some stuff we're checking for like the length of titles. We're checking for the size and fonts and like mixed fonts in the same document and all these kind of crazy things. So you're gonna need that and you're gonna need that and I'll show you, I'll walk you through exactly the parts of that so you can you can build something custom for yourself or you can get me to do it for you. And you will also need an air table. So you will need two tables in air table. Two tables, quality, errors, and you will need projects. You probably already have a projects table. It tracks, you know, this project is for this client, it's due on this day, it's assigned to this person, right? So we also have, you know, writers team. And I'll show you the links between these things in a second. So you will need a list of the common errors that your team makes in Airtable. You probably already, you, you probably noticed that if you have a, a team and a number of projects or like p written pieces coming in, that 80% of the time, someone's doing the same things, right? So you have a team of 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or five, and there's common mistakes that everyone's making. So I'll show you the real uh, stuff. So that might be like too many words, too few words. Maybe it's a formatting thing like sub uh, single spacing versus double spacing. Maybe it's, you know, missing links. Links don't work, etc. Right. Maybe it's uh, if you're doing SEO content, maybe it's like the the there's missing alt text on an image or whatever. There's tools that do this kind of stuff, right? If it's social media, maybe it's you know tweet longer than X characters, 140 characters, or what is it, 200 and something for um, 255 now or 280? I think it's 280 right now, right? So you might say, well, it's too long or it didn't include the link or you know whatever. So. Um, so you will need a table that has the error name, 
Um, ideally, you'd have a link to a training video so that if it's detected, I'll show you in a second, we send an email to the writer to say, hey, we found these two or three errors, here's how to fix them. You probably want a brief paragraph of like what the error actually is, just in case the writer doesn't want to actually watch the video. And then we use a technology called a regular expression to detect whether some errors have happened or not. So you could also do what we've done is have like an annoying, I call it annoyingness factor. So like how bad is the error if it happens? Some are worse than others, right? So for instance, if you have a mismatch between open and close brackets, like somebody put an open bracket and just like forgot to close it, that's pretty minor because somebody could just go in and fix that. Whereas if a paragraph is too short, the writer really just has to go and rewrite the paragraph and like embellish it. And so whether we, we basically um, ranked these errors and we use that later for ranking the writers and seeing to see who, which writers were the best, the most reliable, okay? So, and the reason for that is because as you probably know already, if there's a minor mistake and someone makes one minor mistake, that's like not a huge deal. Whereas if they make a big, like if there's an error that's more work to fix, you that's more important because you'd want to deprioritize that writer if you were making an auto assignment of projects, which we are actually doing. So again, we have the make scenario to detect these errors. So here is how you design the make scenario. Here's how I've, here's the principles behind this particular make scenario. The first thing you have to do is you have to get the content of the Google Doc. So you use this uh, Google Docs, get content of a document module, which then gets the uh, Google Doc and returns it to you in plain text. So that's the first step. And then you also get the project record for the project that you're checking this document against, right? So we are using a project ID number and the writer numbers the document with the project ID, they put it that when they submit it, actually this happens via email, but when they submit it in an email or in a Google uh, Drive folder or something, you can then use that ID to match it against a project. So we have to get the project record, okay? The second step is you need one branch in make for each type of error you're detecting. So you may need, in this case, we have several branches. You may have one that's like, check all the, all the, um, the italic text, right? You may have one that just check all the text after the conclusion, for example, uh, check the references, the end or check the, the beginning or whatever. So you, you may have, and you may have one, you may have one in a simple case, you may have just one branch that just text, uh, just ch to check, uh, to check the text in and of itself. So, uh, this is the count, the complex case, but, but this is why I branched out like that is because sometimes we're checking formatting or font, uh, mixed fonts, you know, some sometimes your Roman, some Arial. Uh, we're checking word counts, things like that. So these all require different branches in Make. And then you have a problem in uh, when I first tried this out. You have a problem where if you're trying to tag uh, or like insert a, a, a an array item onto a specific record, you don't want to overwrite the what's there existing. You want to add to it. So for each branch, what I first do is I get the error that is detected. We figure out if, if the error is found or not. And then we get the, so we have a, a active or inactive flag. Um, we get the project ID record again from Airtable. And so in that way, we, we know we've got the current record in that particular branch of make. And then we add the array items to the record. It ends up looking like this. So this is the project table. And so we can see like for the current submission, we've, we've got two tagged items for this one. We've got a number, we've got one here, one here, one here. Okay. So at that point, then you have your projects record and you have a record of which errors were detected for that project. So what this allows you to do then, you can also add, uh, add these tags manually. So if those of you that know, that understand Airtable, you know you can just go in and, and like click on it and, and add another uh, record link. So that's how we're doing that. What we do after this auto QA kind of custom Grammarly solution is done is we then send a summary of all of the errors that were detected to the writer. 
we CC the the editor as well, and we say, hey, you know, hey, so and so, we found correct like pr uh, errors in this project name, this project ID. Um, it's got, you know, you can see it's uh, it's got the error name, it's got a link to the training video, and it's got like a, a little description of how to fix it, right? So this has got two items. And so this gets automatically sent back to the writer immediately after checking. So this takes, let's see, this takes four seconds to run, 10 seconds to run. There's someone running right now. Yeah, so anywhere between, let's say four to nine seconds, depending on how many errors were detected, this takes to run. So the writer submits it, nine seconds later, they get a report saying, hey, you made these mistakes. And what that allows us to do is fix the mistakes right away. There's an immediate feedback loop so that the editing team or the kind of the proofreading team isn't left in a situation where they have this huge stack of things to fix and they, they, they check all the errors, isn't it back to the writer and the writer's now like not at their computer anymore. So the writer is still at the computer. They've just submitted it. They get a report back immediately saying, yo, fix these things, okay? nine seconds later. We also do, and you could do this as well, right? Uh, if you have a team of writers that's more than a couple, like this, this client has like 50, what we also do is we score up the total number of annoyingness factors for their submissions over the last 14 days. So we can see who's making the most mistakes and the most critical mistakes in the most recent time period. We, we then cross-check that against the number of projects that they have completed. So if somebody's making a lot of mistakes, but they've done a ton of projects, then that it's not as bad as somebody who's making the same number of mistakes with fewer projects, higher number of mistakes per project. And then we use this, you can see we have a quality average score over the last 14 day rolling period. We use this data here, this average quality score, to automatically, when the new project is assigned, or it is one, we figure out, okay, who's got the highest quality score recently? And we reward writers who tend to put out high quality work consistently. So what this does is it incentivizes writers to put out good quality work, not just like volume and speed, but good quality work, um, of course, on time and, and things like that. Uh, because when they do that, they will automatically get more work to do. And then the ones that are making mistakes, we send them less work until they fix it, and we just it just automatically adjusts over time and self-corrects. So that is how this works. Let's do a summary. What's the business case, right? So there's things that Grammarly cannot check for. There's sometimes people forget to do the Grammarly check in the first place too. And you, uh, as a business owner, if you have like a, a like a social media kind of any kind of writing agency where you're doing short form writing, um, SEO content kind of things, there are SOP items that you have that Grammarly does not check, like links or is the, is it long enough? Is it is it too short? Is are the paragraph spacings correct? Does it have enough H2 headers? Like things like that, right? There's things that Grammarly does not check for. And as well, if you do a manual quality check, of course it's time consuming. And of course, if you have very tight deadlines, like this client happens to, you will end up checking the thing after the writer is no longer at the computer. And it just takes you, then, it, then you're adding hours and hours and hours to get the project done at a high quality rate. And then also you have no visibility really at a global level as to who is your, who are your highest quality writers. So. To implement this, again, I reviewed this. You need, uh, actually, this is three, three tables, an air table. You need projects, you need quality errors, and you need a writers slash team table. In your quality errors table, you need a list of the most common errors with some kind of score if you want, and the a regular expression um, to detect them, or some kind of logic to detect them and ideally like the link for the video, a training video or description of like what the error is. You then have a make scenario with, two, with three parts. You have the initial part where it gets the document. You have the branches and then for every individual branch, you get the error, get the project, assign the error to the project. You get this, you generate the email and then you score your writers over time for uh, who has got the highest quality. 
that's how you do it. So if you have a business that's earning, if you're curious about more stuff, if you have a specific application, here's my email here. If you have a business earning at least 10K per month and you have a high project or client volume, you're getting to the point where it's a challenge to do all the project management and stuff and like it feels it feels harder than it needs to be. It feels like there's more manual work. Hopefully the video above or this 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 tutorial gave you an explanation of to how you could automate things that most people think cannot be automated. So let me know what your specific application is. You can book a call with me right here. I will leave this link below the video as well. And if you are earning at least 5K per month and you want to earn more and you get leads from Upwork, I also have an automated Upwork lead gen service. So we check Upwork for you automatically. We talk to you first to find out what your ideal client is, what your ideal job is, where that is, what time of the day you want to get alerts for, uh, if you if you want us to pre-compose your proposal so you can just copy and paste or whether you just want to get alerts in Slack, depending on like very, very hyper, insanely refined parameters for that. We use this game, the same kind of regular expressions as the quality thing for detecting the right jobs for you. So if you want to talk about that specifically, that is the Calendly link for that. I will again drop both of those links below this video so that if you have uh, one of these two needs and you would like help with it, then you can do that. So that's it. If you want to, this is created by me. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, that's my Twitter. Again, you're on my YouTube channel already. So yeah, whatever. If you're finding this some, through some other mechanism, this is my YouTube channel where I share more tutorials on how I have automated very high scale, high speed businesses ranging anywhere from like, let's say three to 5k per month, all the way to a couple hundred thousand per month and everything in between. So that's all for today. Subscribe to this channel if you want more stuff like this, if you want to be notified about when I launch things like this. And uh, that's it. Peace guys.